Hey, babe. He, yeah, babe. 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 It's so good to see you. You as well. And you look fantastic. Thank you so much. What you been doing? Thank yoga? you so much. Doing what you've been telling me to do. Yeah, getting that, getting that in. Look at yeah, that. Look at that. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. Mine's, I mean, it's there. Yeah. I trust you. It's there. <laughs> um, we're matching today. We are. Matching well, today. Look at this. The mess around. The mess around. Classic. Very classic. It's Everyone's classic. been talking about it. Yeah. Um, every time I walk down the street, I see people wearing it and I just get so excited and so happy. Yeah. You yeah. know how to rep. I know. Yeah. It's a great gift for uh, both young and old. And, Grandmas. And dying. Grandpas. Yes, exactly. Great funeral attire. Oh, yeah. I'm going to wear this to my next funeral. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but how you been? I've been good. That's good. That's... I've truly been good. Yeah. I've been on a health kick. Nice. Thanks to you. You're very, very welcome. Um, we say health is wealth and you have a lot of houses, so <laughs> you got to pay for them. That's right. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we are um, we're just picking up from where we left off last week, folks. Uh, we are here with episode 218, Tenfinity. Tenfinity oh equals gosh. celebrating friendship. Yes. Adults celebrating their friendship, which is basically kind of what this podcast is. Yes. Uh, 100 percent. Yeah. Uh, it's not something that we do. Uh, consciously, no. but we do it. You yeah. know, we go out, we have these little moments where we go, oh man, you know, I've known you for X amount of years. Mm -hmm. But in this episode, for some reason, these two uh, Jack A's mm -hmm. are uh, making it a bit more formal. Well, one in specific. One in specific. Is pushing it on the other. Yes, indeed. I feel like that's kind of like the me in our relationship a little bit. Where I'm like, I'm going to schedule this every single week so you have to hang out with me and we can talk about how much we love each other and this is really important to me. And then we're just going to let the world like watch it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm busy. You know what I'm saying? It's the ultimate mess around. <laughs> 100%. I've trapped you. I know. I've trapped your ass in this loft. And now you put me in a studio. That's right. Because we used to speak over Zoom. Dreams come true. And now we're here in person. That's right. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, get out, get out. All right, break it down, break it down. What are we going to talk about today? Okay, this episode is interesting. Um, so in this episode, Nick and Schmidt, they are planning a party to celebrate their 10-year anniversary, which mm -hmm. is weird, uh, their 10-year anniversary of living together. Uh, but quickly, they start arguing over planning chores. Now, I've never done this. We just spoke about that. I, this is not something I've ever done. But apparently, this is something that uh, thirty-year-old like white dudes do. I called. I called six black people, and I said, "Do y'all do this?" And they were like, "Hell no." <laughs> um, called an Indian guy, mm -hmm. Utkarsh. Yeah, like, the Ut one Indian guy you know. Yeah, I know like three. I know. Yeah. I know a lot. <laughs> I know a lot of. Utkarsh. Utkarsh said no. He said, "This ain't what we do." No. Um, and also on this episode, uh, Winston has become friendly with professional football player Jax McTavish, mm -hmm. which is a funny name, uh, played by the magnificent Steve Howey. And instantly, Jess is all over that. She is trying to steal him away from Winston. She's trying to get it. Yeah. She's trying to get it in mm -hmm. and get over Nick being her last kiss. She's she's way over that. Now, meanwhile, CC she gets a less than stellar surprise mm. from... Um, from Chevrank, when he gives her this kind of basic and boring wedding proposal, like, you know, let's do this thing. Um, and she's over him, you know, kind of in this moment. Um, and all these storylines, they come crashing together in uh, at a party called Tinfinity. The Tinfinity Party. The Tinfinity Party. I would just like to say it made me think instantly that our 10 year friendship anniversary mm -hmm. would be August 2021. And we missed it. This year will be 13 years, which is our lace anniversary. And it's coming up in August. And I do think that we should honor it. Lace? Fuck you think I'm going to do, Hannah? Just show up. With something in a, lacy <laughs> on the podcast. You all know it's going to happen. Every time I do that, people start paying me for things. <laughs> and, and I'm done with those days. Okay. Uh, yeah, not the most exciting one, lace, but I'm going to figure something out. I'm going to get you a gift this year. Thank you. It's going to be our first ever celebration, formal celebration. Well, you're rich enough. Your show is doing well. <laughs> Please get me a gift. I am showless. This episode, <laughs> by the way, was directed by Max Winkler, who ended up directing 
a few. A lot. I think he's us. the second most. I want to say the second most um, episodes directed by you know really? by him. I think Trent might have the most, but in, yeah. Max is in a yeah close. Second. Love Max Winkler. He's the best. Amazing, and it was written by Kim Rosenstock and Josh. Malmuth. Ah, yes. The Malmuth. The Malmuth. We love him. Oh, yes. He's yeah. great. Um, so, yeah, here we are. Mm. Um, so, so let's dive right into it. Um, Schmidt and Nick invite everyone to their 10-year anniversary of living together. Yes. They they do this fun flashback. Uh, <laughs> where every, First of all, every time Nick and uh, Schmidt have a flashback episode... It's, it's Gold. I could watch that series. Yes. I, I, I will pitch that series. That's a spinoff everybody wants. One hundred percent. Yeah. Um they have the wood flashback, they have the paper <laughs> flashback. Just the inherent violence of all of it. It's is so the funny part. So stupid. <laughs> So stupid. I remember when I was watching it, I, I I remember the moment and I didn't I didn't actually remember filming this, but watching it when I had the the wood in my hand and Nick has an axe and he's about to chop it. For some reason, when I rewatched this episode, I, I must have checked out because I do not remember that happening. Really? Not at all. His I, swing is so high that you yes. know it's coming for your hand. And I was genuinely concerned. Yeah, because Jake be drinking. <laughs> and, <no. laughs> he was having a good time in those early seasons. Oh, yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah, yeah, was yeah. having a good time. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was great. It was great. We're all footloose and fancy um, free. <laughs> and a paper. So let me get this straight. Yeah. Wood, paper. That's a real thing. Yes. This is so when you if I mean because you've clearly done this. Yes. When it's a, you say a lace anniversary, for example, like yes. what is the real celebration? So I've actually never done it where I've celebrated with what the thing is because mm -hmm. paper. This yeah. is not very exciting. No, and you got to put in time and work to get to like the good stuff, like yeah. the diamond anniversary. Okay. Yeah. So I've never done it, but I like the idea of it, and I feel like this year I'm going to do it for the first time with you. With me. Yeah, lace. They got these lace LeBrons that they, I think they might have. So I'll, I'll take a pair lace of those. Lace LeBrons. Or a lace Ferrari. Noted. A Ferrari with lace seats. Sure, sure. Then I'll celebrate all day. Lego. Lego <laughs> lace Ferrari. That's what I'm getting you. It's the thought that counts. Mm -hmm. um, so Jess says she needs uh, to date a new guy. Yeah. To get over Nick being her last kiss. She can't stop thinking about his mouth being on her mouth. Yeah, there's like a big scene where Zoe and I talk about it. Zoe is so funny in that scene because mm -hmm. she's just kind of like living through the emotion mm -hmm. and trying to just talk it out. And yes. Cece's advice is you need a palate cleanser. Yeah. You need just like a new mouth on your mouth, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a fun look, I feel like, for the Jess character to just like use a body yeah. to erase a memory. 100%. And I also think in real life that that is something that people tend to do. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it's met with regret. Yes. Because that 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 next mouth you kiss might be a nasty mouth. That's right. And you don't want to just go around mouthing people just to get over somebody. But, you know, yeah, it happens. Well, that's the funny part about this episode, too, is that they show um, Jake with the nastiest looking mouth. Yeah. With, with the, the cupcake. With the cupcake. <laughs> And this is and and this makes her feel some type of way in a or emotional, I mm -hmm. guess, if you will, because it, I don't know if it's turning her on at all. That's right. But that, but she, you know, clearly, which is the worst feeling it when is. you're sitting there going like, why, why is my body responding to this? Because my brain can see that this is disgusting. Yeah, and my body is doing different things. One hundred percent. My body right now only responds it, like it truly only responds to one woman and one woman only. I'm not gonna say her name because I've said it a million times. And that's it. Zoe Kravitz. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help yourself. Okay. Enough silence and you're going to you're going to fill the space. <laughs> that's right. OK. So, yeah, that'd be the only person I'd be like, come on, I can't get over you. Um, she's going to call. She's, she's seriously going to call follow, like a restraining order yeah. against me. <laughs> don't don't do that. I'm, I'm not serious. Um, OK, so then she goes to the bar. She's going to just try to find anybody. Yes. And then every single person she, talk, person she talks to is an instant turn off. Yes. Because uh, of crazy things. And this is what I, I genuinely wanted to talk to you about when I was mm -hmm. watching it. Is the guy who says that he's wearing denim and he hasn't washed his jeans in 18 months. I know <laughs> lots of people that with jeans, they don't, unless something like s falls and stains it, like they they don't wash their denim because they believe it like changes the fade of it. Yeah. 
Or like makes it tight and weird and yeah. they don't wash their jeans. You know what's interesting? For a while, I... I, I okay, mm. let me just say, mm. I have been that person, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like 18 months. It was more so like, because I, I have a lot of jeans, but they're like two or three pair that I wear mm-hmm. all the time. And it wasn't until I remember walking a lot one day and then putting those, get, getting home, putting those pants up the next day going, oh, what do I want to wear? Pick those pants up and realize how awful they smelled. Oh. And I was like, man, I don't, I don't be washing my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, just because the smell ain't there don't mean it ain't dirty. It just, you know, the smell means there's a surplus of filth. Yeah. So I started washing my jeans. The, and it was like a trial by error thing, trial, trial and error thing. I would wash them, yeah. dry them, then it would come back looking all raggedy and, and disheveled. Yeah. So then a wise person once told me, a wise person named Google, uh-huh. that said, you wash them inside out, yes. cold, yeah. and then just air dry them, like hang them out to dry. Yeah. They feel a little crunchy. They'll never feel the same is the truth. Yeah. It is a weird thing. Mm-hmm. I just thought there's like, there's a lot of thought about this as we're discussing. Mm-hmm. The fact that it was such an instant, obvious turnoff to whatever, you know, like writer pitch that particular thing. Yes. I was like, wow, they, they wash their jeans all the time. Oh, 100%. And I feel like they're the minority. Maybe well, controversial, but I think that. Well, who is it that doesn't wash their legs? Legs? Yeah. Just legs in general? Like hips down? Yeah, it was like a thing. Or mid-thigh down? I think it was Taylor Swift or something like that who said she doesn't what? wash her legs. Somebody was like Somebody that. Google Careful, yeah. I think it was just white people. Just, in general. It was a generalization. Because I remember we did an episode of Woke about that. You mean like in the shower, they don't like... They wash everything else and they're like, they the soap down runs the down. They soap and their legs It up. runs down the legs. So they, fig- they you know, that's this is what... So we did a bit on Woke about that. And and uh, Blake Anderson, when he was performing it, the, the, the line was, how do, you wa- how do you wash up in the shower? And he was like, you know, I just I do it like this. And I do it like this. And I rinse and then I get out. <laughs> he was like... Ugh, you don't you don't wash your legs. And he's like, no, no the, the soap dri- trickles down and washes my legs for me. And then Taylor Swift. And then we posted it on. You're right. It was Taylor. It Swift. was Taylor Swift. It was Taylor Swift. I got to ask her about I that. Genuinely, like, don't think it's that crazy that you're not. Unless there's like something on, like you don't have to sit there like scrub your legs. So you don't wash your legs. No, I don't think so. You wash your not arms. I think about it. You wash your arms. Yeah, because it's all kind of like within easy reach. Taylor Hannah, Swift and I have so much in common. Hannah, you half white? Yes, I am. Bottom okay. half. Oh, there, we, there, there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> they solved it. Caucasian from the hips down. <laughs> okay, it all checks out. It all checks out. Um, the rash guy. That guy is my favorite. Because she hates him and all he's trying to do is better his health. That's right. That's it. The he, fact that it was a prescription lotion. <laughs> mind you, that now that I say it out loud, I don't know if that's the guy that I just want to like have like a fun make out at the bar with. I mean, you know, everybody got something. Wait, but like, what if it's, there's, what if it's just not the visible, but I don't know. Uh, it, could, it could be other places. It could be other places. What if he needs help in the application? Just like not, you know, that's like, like that's relationship. It's good to know you're stuff. not a team player. No, I'm not. You're not a team no, player. No, oil up your own body parts <laughs> with your, your medications. <laughs> I've just met you. Also too much information. That is true. That is true. However, however, she has these three guys yes. that completely turn her off. Yes. And then because she is so bent on getting what she wants, yeah. she sees the tall, strong, good looking guy. She's mm-hmm. like, I'm going to make out with him. Oh, and he talks about his feelings. Surprise. He got something too. Yeah. That boy, that boy emotional. Very emotional. That boy wear his heart on his sleeve, both of them. That was, do you remember there was like a Friends episode? That was the Bruce Willis. Don't, don't ask me if I know. Friends arc. A Friends episode. I, no, I've never seen Friends. Never. I was busy watching real TV shows like Martin Living Single. Friends is a ripoff of Living Single. And to be fair, New Girl is a ripoff of Friends. <laughs> what i'm saying know your history know where you came from remember where you came from lamorne i've never i've never watched friends. really never watched it okay so it's not like i'm a diehard friends fan but i remember that there was like bruce willis was on the show mm-hmm. same thing jennifer aniston's character rachel was just like i need some a man who's like in touch with his emotions mm-hmm. and he's like strong and big mm-hmm. and sexy same as this like steve, steve howie character mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. realizes he has feelings and then just can't stop 
crying. Is that what Bruce Willis was doing? Yes. And it's super funny to see oh. him like that when he's, you know, big action star at the time. And, and she gets so turned off mm-hmm. and then she has to figure out how to moonwalk away from Bruce. Ah, which I, is similar to this situation. Maybe I should watch Friends. Just watch that one. That's I'll a really watch good that one. one episode. Yeah. yeah. If you're out there, please comment <laughs> below which episode that is. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I refuse to Google. I don't want to Google. I want my algorithm to start sending me weird Friends gifts and quotes. You want to hear a fun piece of trivia? Sure. Is that Prince mm-hmm. used to email me and ask when like the episodes would be on. He's like, when's the new episode on? And I would email Prince back and be like, Google it. And that's what I'm going to say to you right now. I'm going to treat you like <laughs> you, Prince. I'm like, told, I'm not. You told Prince to I'm Google not it. To, I'm not here to be like, it's Tuesdays at nine on Fox. No, I it's, was like, Prince, get it together. Google. It's Prince. No, these people are not going to sit there and tell you what the, when the Bruce episode is. Google You know what yourself. I would do? If Prince if Prince emailed me and said, hey, what time is uh, New Girl episode coming on? I will fly to this man's <laughs> house and change the channel for him. <laughs> You kidding me? That's why he did not email you. You were too thirsty. Too thirsty. Well, I was, thirsty. I was out there dry mouthed. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, okay, I want to talk about the name Jax McTavish because apparently I read this interview where it was Dave Finkel mm-hmm. and Brett Bear and Liz. Elizabeth Merriweather and they yeah. were talking about this episode um, and they were saying how Berkeley Johnson mm-hmm. was like the name guy. One of the writers on the show, incredible writer, um, the name guy, always like just could come up with really cool, fun character mm-hmm. names. And they feel like this one yeah. was a swing and a miss. I personally yeah. loved it. I I, th- I loved it because I thought it was funny. It Me was too. such a like made up name. I know. That's <laughs> why I liked it. it. In fact, back uh, behind the scenes, Jake and Max were always doing these bits. They were like, because <laughs> they thought the name was ridiculous too. Yep. So a lot of I, a lot of outtakes of Jake going, Jax McTavish? And then Max would go, Jax McTavish from the San Francisco team? <laughs> <laughs> and they just kept doing that bit over and over again. So in fact, every time I think of Jax McTavish or this episode, or even Steve Howie, yeah. I always go, oh, from the San Francisco team. <laughs> if I see a 49ers game, I go, oh, look, it's the San Francisco team. Right. Just based on... On this particular, just the, the deleted scenes. Yeah. yeah. I think the fact that they said that they were talking about this episode and how there were so many things they were trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it would all line up in some episodes. Yeah. You could see like, that is definitely written for TV. 100%. Which bumped them, I mm-hmm. guess, um, Brett and Dave and, and Liz. But I kind of liked it. I like yeah. the fact that there were some things that were so obviously written and it just made it out loud funny. Oh, 100%. 100%. Because at the end of the day, it's still... TV. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be silly. Yeah. My 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 character had shrimp fork hands. Yeah. It's for it's for it's for fun. Yeah. That's yeah. all right. Go with a bit sometimes. One hundred percent. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, f- oh, also, uh, maybe we could talk about that later or now. Um, in that in- the same interview you're talking about, mm. um, Liz spoke about how difficult it was to make this episode. Yeah. Based off of. You know, if you're paying attention to this episode, you notice that uh, Zoe is not in the A story. Yeah. Which is rare yeah. for this. I mean, she's the face of the show. Correct. So it, it, it was difficult for them to piece together something compelling in that particular storyline. Um, and also it was difficult because of weather. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently there was huge rainstorms that came and rained it out. But majority of the episode is outside. Yeah. And so it was all muddy and changing and looking different. And so it just became really tricky to get it all done. I remember in that last scene, actually, when I run into the tent, there was no tent before. Mm-hmm. And Winkler was like, we got to put a tent up. Yeah. It started to rain again. Mm-hmm. And they put me in that black coat that has like kind of like s- silver studs down the arm. Mm-hmm. And I the coat didn't fit right because it was like a last minute grab and they had to put something on because it was freezing. Mm-hmm. I remember that for some reason at that whole episode, I remember that moment because I was like so personally resistant to this coat. I was like, I don't think this is the greatest coat. Right. They're like, well, it's freezing and raining and mm-hmm. the tent's up. We don't care. Right. Get the coat on and run in. 100%. So I know that all, that's the part I remember that the weather was bad and it was weird and the location was difficult because it was super muddy all over the ground. Yes, because it typically takes five days to shoot yeah. an episode. This one apparently took a month. Yeah. 
And I pr- it's probably the only one that was like that. Yeah. I don't remember another one where no. we had to. I remember long days. Up. I remember like a six day shoot here and there. Sure. But a month. Yeah. That's you shoot a whole film in a month. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's because of the location just being like unshootable. 100%. So they were just like piecing it back and forth. I want to buy a house with a big backyard so then I can just tell film productions to just stay there all day and shoot. And yeah. Pay me millions of dollars to use my house. It is the real hack. Yeah. Yeah. But then you have people there. All the time. Love people. In your house. Love shooting. people. Yeah, as long as they give you the cash for it. You're like, okay, 100%. great, no problem. Love a, all these people with all the a I'll have a merch section right in the front so they can <laughs> pick up some merch, merch when they're working. Yeah. Hey, Hannah, what do you want to do right now? I want to throw out a break. And Let's then when we come back, I want to talk about party planning responsibilities okay. that are in this episode between Nick and Schmidt and then maybe for our lace party in August. Mm-hmm. Let's go to break. Oh, my God. And we are back. (laughs) If you're just tuning in. Uh, Hannah, what were you saying? (laughs) You know what's funny? Every time you say, and we're back, it makes me think of like the old school, like hypnotists. Mm -hmm. And you're back Back in the room. That's right. And you're a chicken. That's right. Yeah. 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 I've never been hypnotized, by the way. Me either. And I don't want to be. I don't trust it. Yeah. They're going to make me do some weird stuff. It's a weird thing, though, because part of me truly feels like it's all fake. Yeah. Everyone's acting and fake and going along with a bit. Mm-hmm. But then I also would never do it. I've tried. Have you really tried? Yeah. And they couldn't I, get you. They, no, they couldn't get me. Nobody can get me. These these spiritual mediums, these hypnotists, even magicians don't want to fuck with me. Magicians make me nervous. <laughs> That's another thing <laughs> yeah. for another day, you guys. Okay, fine. Okay. okay, fine. Party planning responsibilities. He gives, Schmidt gives Nick. Mm-hmm. Porta bodies and balloons. Yes. Um, <laughs> the execution of those two responsibilities also may be one of my favorite parts of this episode. Porta potties. And it, what's funny about that one in particular is it's so Nick. It is That's such right. a Nick thing to bring the filthiest toilet and buy it. He bought it from the trash yard. Yeah. Of the po- porta potty rental spot. Still paid for it. It was from trash. They still got 60 bucks out of him. Same guy. This Again, this is, th- but this is right on brand with him. That's um, true. You know, he, he's the I'll do it myself person, mm-hmm. the simple fix, the weird mechanism in the bathroom to get the toilets to yeah. flush. The in later episodes you see, you know, his rental schemes with, 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 move, the, with moving vans and all kinds of stuff, real apps, you know, yeah. things like that. This, but this one definitely makes sense. Yeah, I low key felt bad. I felt bad for Schmidt in that moment <laughs> because why? <laughs> because I everybody's got friends that's just not responsible. Yeah, and you're like, man, I I feel bad. Like I have friends, for example, that I don't like to invite places sometimes because I'm like, they're going to do something to embarrass me. And then they always do. And then there are moments where you're like, oh, I should invite such and such. And then you realize like, no, I'm not going to invite them because they always, they, and you feel bad about it. Like they're going to do something out of pocket. Yeah, because they just can't help it. Nick in this, Nick just can't help but put some bullshit together. Like What's a, funny is that usually then Schmidt has a big reaction to it. Like he's mm-hmm. so frustrated. And this is the most loving episode because mm-hmm. Schmidt's is like, all right, man. I kept saying, I'm proud of you. Yeah. Good job. And I got this backup and it flipped. It was then Nick that was like so hurt yeah. by the fact of like, but I did it. I did a good job. And if it's good enough, this should be good enough. Right. And then he's loitering outside of like the stinky, gross porta yeah. potty, which is also like not the well, not what you want. Well, I've done being, like, that. Come in the little box. Well, I've done. I've loitered outside of porta potties for other reasons, but... <laughs> <laughs> I have it. I, I, I'm done with college. Uh, but no, yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. But I do think Schmidt. I think the reason Schmidt was kind of like whatever about it because he he made backups for everything. Yeah, he was like, I I I know you're going to screw this up. Correct. I know you're going to screw this up. And I got you. Yeah. Yeah. And the hot air balloon made me laugh too because he was like, "Well, I got one," and then he still managed to screw the whole thing up by not getting the. Propane. Would you get in a hot air balloon? No, I don't like them. I don't like the idea of them. I'm yeah. not into them. I think it's weird. I feel yeah. like because of that, somehow the algorithm has figured out how to send me every hot air balloon death. Not into <laughs> oh, the thing. Oh God, it's so weird. Would yeah, you? Would, hell no. Well, I don't Thank even want to get on a roller coaster. Mm-mm. I don't even like to jump high. Nope. 
Not That's why me. I stopped playing basketball. Yeah. Because when I get up there, sometimes I'm like, oh, okay. shit, how am I going to get down? All right. okay. You know what I'm saying? Fall flat. That's Athletic what you're ability. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't get it at all. Yeah. Not for me. Roller coaster no. where you go like upside down and are hanging in some weird contraption that mm -mm. runs over and over and over again. Yeah. Hard pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Final Destination, that movie is a documentary. All those deaths mm -hmm. are uh, have happened. Correct. And have occurred in real life. Yeah. So no, no hot air balloon for me. No. Yeah. No, I ain't risking nothing. Mm hmm. Um, now, Jess, she's asking. Um, she wants to meet this guy. She wants to meet Jax. Yeah. And 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 Winston is like, it's shocking how how against this he is because he wants to be friends with him. Two things that were going through my mind when rewatching it. One. This is no knock because I think these are the greatest writers yes. ever. Um, they just, I think that was a shitty, <laughs> I thought it was terrible. Like it, it was a terrible, it was a terrible uh, uh, character arc for, for Winston. It just was weird. I think the, I thought the lines were weird and maybe hard to say. Or, and, and I felt personally, this, this goes back to something we've spoken about um, in season one mm. as well. How I was so, un I, I was so, not there yeah. yet with the rest of the cast with every, I think everybody else was clicking. And I was like, as I was watching this episode, I was like, Jesus, the morning is a bad performance. Like it just was, it just was. And I even talking about it, I'm like, do I want people to go back and rewatch this episode? Right. No, yeah. to start from season three and on. That's kind of how I feel about some of my performances in this season. It's so funny how you see yourself when you watch it back because I completely understood the bit because mm -hmm. here's the way it went in my brain. And now tell me if it makes more sense to you. If you went to meet me at a bar, mm -hmm. right? And you walked in and you had just met him, mm -hmm. okay? At some whatever event. And he was like, cool, I'll come kick it with you with LeBron. Mm -hmm. And now you're about to get to sit down and kick it with LeBron. And I was just like, you haven't said a word to him yet. You're mm -hmm. just about to. And he's like there to nerd out about all things basketball. And I'm like, oh, he's cute. I'm going to go over and see if he wants to like, like, like if he likes baking. And you, mm -hmm. I think you'd be like, you need to back up. I would, I, this is not what this is about. This is about me and this like childhood dream happening. Could you just move away? Yeah. I, you know what, when you put it in that, when you put it in that light, I still disagree. Really? No. <laughs> you'd no. be like, you'd let me hijack? No, LeBron? Yeah, a little, a little bit, a little bit. And here's, here's why I understand the idea behind, okay, this is my, like, I, I want to be friends with this person. Yeah. But if you're trying to be friends with a professional athlete. Yeah. The best way to do it. <laughs> I've had this happen before. I, I'm not going to name names. Maybe I could actually, I know I'm not going to name names. So a friend of mine played for the Clippers. Okay. I was at a party once with another friend of mine, an actress. Uh -huh. I didn't know him at the time, the player. He comes up to me, and he, and I'm a huge fan of this person. And I and he comes up to me, and he said, uh, and he was like, hey, is, uh, that's your friend? And I was like, and I Im immediately I went into <laughs> like, oh, I get tickets mode. <laughs> right. I went into selfish mode. You're like, this is transactional. Right. I got but, you. But it's a win, win, win for everybody. Sure. She, she, she gets the the man of her dreams. He gets the woman of her dreams. I get the seats of my dreams. But this is a hijack. In this episode, this is a hijack. Yeah. Right. You've already got your FaceTime. You're about to now have the conversation you've been waiting for. He's kicking it in the bar with you. Yeah. You don't need any in. You're in, and now it's about to be taken. You're about to be out. Yeah, no, just be, because <laughs> just give me the I'm a, I'm a guy, you know what I mean? I know, I know how it is. I don't want to be sitting up there. This is a very mature response, actually. Cuddled up with some six foot five guy, making me look like Little Spoon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm the top. Okay, I got it. All right. Okay, you we're going to move on. We're going to move on. Nobody, <laughs> nobody bottoms me. Okay. I bottom them. That's not going on the merch. This is yeah. This that's not a shirt logo. No, it's not a shirt logo. <laughs> Just want to say. Yeah. I mean, Nobody. Don't, don't make that into a meme. Don't, <laughs> don't send this out to anybody. <laughs> oh God. Why are we doing video? You should. You, okay. That's when you fucked up. That's right. <laughs> so we gonna do video. That's um, on you. We need to talk about this proposal. Yes. Oh my god. Because it has gosh. been making me crazy. I had forgotten. Mm -hmm. 
Because everybody thinks about like the big Taylor Swift wedding, mm-hmm. the big season finale. I had genuinely forgotten until I rewatched how Cece got proposed to by Shivrang. Yes. And it is the absolute worst thing. Yeah. Like if they had to dig the writers for like, what's the worst way you could get proposed to? Because mm-hmm. it's an arranged marriage. So the moms have said we're cool. Yeah. So like, like, what are we even doing? And I think that's what he was thinking is just sort of like, eh, have like you, it's done. Have you seen the Gucci Mane proposal? No. So Gucci Mane rapper is at a Atlanta Hawks basketball game and he's sitting on the floor with his fiance at the time, his girlfriend. And he, the camera goes on to them and he pulls out a ring She's sitting next to him and he goes like this. He just yeah. kind of goes, here, you want this? <laughs> like he just hands her the ring. It was like, yeah, what's up? That, that's bad. That's bad. You're like on the like, kiss cam, you don't even get the kiss. You yeah. don't even get the engagement on the kiss cam. How mm-hmm. did, how would she know it's a proposal as opposed to just like jewelry, like a gift? She like probably, I'm she, this rich and here's. She probably here's, asked. She she probably knew. She know. She when, women it. know when y'all getting proposed to. I don't know. I'd just be like, I you didn't say, I, what do you, what? I'd yeah. be like, thank you for the, for the jowl ring. Thank you for this huge diamond ring. Yeah. On the kiss cam. Well, you haven't said anything to indicate that this is other than just like a gift. I'd just be like, thank you. Bye. Unless you ask me for something. I'm can just, we pull that up? Can, not now, obviously, but can we show a little clip of that if we could find I, it? Okay. So it's Gucci Mane, then Shivrang. Yeah. Shivrang okay, was You just little, want to know it's not the worst. It's not the worst. It could get worse. It's not the worst because I, I understand where he's coming from. It was an arranged thing. And he was like, I, do I propose? Because someone else has made this decision for well, us. It's like the decision's just been made. So everybody's cool. Like, so should we, like, should we actually do it? Yeah. And I think that's where her right. heart like breaks a little bit because she'd always had this idea of what it would be like and to be like, I know that this proposal is happening. Mm-hmm. And because Schmidt's character is so over the top. Right. So to go from someone with that energy mm-hmm. to someone who's just be like, we cool? Yeah. Is that's like that's that's the roller coaster. Well, the thing is, he it's 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 disingenuous if he does some big proposal because you also see it coming. You know, it's happening. It's not a shock. It's not. Do you, do you feign surprise that you just go, Oh my God, I didn't know this was happening. You knew it was happening because your parents talked about it. The truth of relationships is sometimes you do have to fake it. Uh, I don't want to know what's going on in your house. (laughs) Sometimes you got to just sit there and put in a little more effort on things. You know what I'm saying? And so I feel like with this proposal, look, it's not the like the most romantic, like, you know, Mm -hmm. path that we have taken. I can see how hard you are resisting to say something inappropriate. And I appreciate it. I'm not going to say it. I know. I appreciate it. I will just say this. I see it. I'll just say this. Your thoughts are loud. I just say this. I've never faked it. It's all the women out there. (laughs) I was always real with you when I said I was done. Okay. All right. We're talking about romantic <laughs> gestures. Let's oh. just stay on the same page here. Oh, sorry. Okay. I get carried away. I can tell. I sometimes think think this is the morning after podcast. I know. I know. <laughs> it's just going to do like a star wipe and then yeah. we're going to be in another podcast. <laughs> and then we'll be talking about different things. Yes. I feel like. Mm-hmm. So they're on this thing and I think she just wants to feel like this is not, this is not just going to be like a business arrangement. Is there something there? Can I huh. feel something real that's right. romantic? romantic and whatever and if there's going to be any moment it's the decision that we're going to spend the rest of our lives together and yes. it's a huge nothing burger yeah and i think she's just like devastated but then the sweet part of this episode is that he sees it and actually then tries he does he does and and to my surprise cc was surprised yeah because she actually thought it wasn't going to happen yeah. in the fashion that she had imagined. And this is why Shafrang is such a good guy. He's a good um, guy. Until later. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> then he's the worst. Then he's the worst guy. Um, yeah. But then, you know, we ultimately see like, okay, he's, he's putting in some effort here. And, and given the circumstances, he still really wants this besides it being arranged. Yeah, but it's one of those moments, too, when you see Cece's face at the end. It's like, be careful what you wish for. Exactly. Now it's big. It's out there. It's public. It's loud. Everyone's seen it. And here's what I really think is that yeah. he did that. And it's really earnest. And she still felt nothing. Exactly. Because when you say, it's interesting, you say, be careful what you wish for. 
You asked for something and got it. Same with Jess. Mm -hmm. She asked for Mm -hmm. this guy. She asked to get kissed by some strapping young hunk and he comes with a lot of baggage. And then right after Shivrang leaves the stage, he (laughs) gets on the stage to do another speech. That's right. And she can't hide her emotions as well as Cece. And she just runs away yeah. <laughs> while saying no. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. No. I mean, that's the part I thought was like a nice parallel that they put in the episode is both of the female characters had been really specific mm-hmm. and asking for what they want from a man and what they want from their relationships. Mm-hmm. And it was not Nick and not Schmidt. Mm-hmm. And then in this episode, by the way, where the A story is all about Nick and Schmidt. Yes. These women get what they ask for. Mm-hmm. And it's a nightmare. It is a nightmare indeed. Okay, so we are going to go to a break. And when we come back... You got something for me. Yeah, that's right. You, yeah, I hope you, I, and I hope you came prepared. See, we got the bank. And we are back. Listeners, if you're just tuning in, uh, Hannah has spotted something, Mm -hmm. I believe, or maybe she hasn't. Or maybe she hasn't. Hannah, Yeah. did you find the bear this week? Listen, I looked. I looked, I watched, I rewatched, and then I did what I feel like is a fair bear cheat, Mm -hmm. which is then I go through Reddit, Reddit. (laughs) I I, I comb the blogs, and it's the one episode Mm -hmm. that feels like we haven't found a bear but i will say on this podcast when i say that someone will then email or dm us and help me out so this one i can't find it if you guys find it please let me know and then i will follow up and uh, let everybody know where it is and I, I believe i believe that bear is there in every episode and i found it if you say your bear chest, no, um, I'll take. It. I didn't have my bear chest out. Oh. I didn't have my bear chest out, but I found the bear. It was the tattoo on that guy's arm. What? Well, a bear. Whose arm? The guy, one of the guys she was, she was dating. One had a bear. The, he had a bear on, on their arm. He had a bear tattoo on his arm. Is this true? No, absolutely not. I just oh. made that up. But it could be true. It could be true. If you're out there, go I ahead. I really and wanted look. to believe it. <laughs> go, go ahead. I and got look. really excited for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Never trust me. Ah, uh, well. Speaking of surprises, of watching mm-hmm. this episode, mm-hmm. um, the person who I thought was the DJ, mm-hmm. um. Turns out it's a lighting guy. See it in the credits. Um, is my dear friend Jimmy. What? Jimmy, who is on Not Dead Yet, who plays Mason on Not Dead Yet, is Wait, there setting up the lights with the redhead oh. who says something like, Leave me alone, you wang yeah. to Max. So um, I called Jimmy and I was like, Tell me what you remember mm-hmm. from booking the lighting guy on New Girl. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play it for you. What? All right, so here we go. This is what Jimmy sent of remembering um, doing his big new girl booking mm-hmm. to play the lighting guy to get yelled at by um, Max. <laughs> so I don't really remember the whole auditioning for new girl. That was like, it went by so fast. I just don't remember the whole process. Um, but it was probably pretty quick, to be honest, um, which is why I don't remember it. You know, you audition so many times and they start to kind of blur together. Um, but I do remember... My first day there, I got there and I went to hair and makeup and the first person that was in hair and makeup was Hannah. That was the first person that I technically met. Um, Now, Hannah was so quiet, Um, not rude or anything, but she was just very quiet, kept to herself. You know, we probably said like a quick hi, um, but she was just kind of keeping to herself, very quiet, Um, which is so funny now knowing her from doing Not Dead Yet because... She couldn't be more outgoing and friendly and funny. Um, so I, th- I thought that's so funny now looking back. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's so, it was so funny. But um, yeah, so we did hair and makeup and stuff. And then I just remember that we were supposed to film at the park across from Fox, but it had rain, so they had to push it. And so then when we filmed there, it was so muddy. Um, I just remember it being a mess. But... Uh, Eventually, you know, we did my scene and uh, I thought it went well. You know, it's it's my character and the and the Schmidt character interacting. He wants everything to be perfect and he's being, you know, crazy and neurotic with me and I'm just not having it. I have no patience for it. My character didn't want to deal with it. Um, but the funny thing is, is that everyone thinks that my character was the DJ on that show, but I was actually a lighting guy. 
I was in charge of making the lights perfect for his big reveal. And um, but when you watch it back and everyone who watches it, everyone who sees it and says something about it, they always go, you were the DJ. You were the DJ guy. And it's so funny because technically I was the lighting guy, um, which I don't care. Like, whatever. I'll be whatever guy you want me to be. But uh, yeah. So it was it was a fun experience overall. Um, yeah. Jimmy. Oh, yeah. I work with him every week. He's the greatest. That's dope. I was super surprised. That's dope. And it made me realize that New Girl truly was like the comedy um, law and order, but like of L.A., not of New York, where everybody at some point. Yeah. Who's like an awesome Rick person Glassman. has been on there. Yeah. Rick Glassman was also a New Girl. What? Yes. No. Who well, you work with when I did yeah. it. Yeah. Rick Glass. When? I forget what season, I forget what episode, but Rick was, I think it was, an. I think it was Olivia Munn and, J- and Jake were uh, at a dinner or something like that. And he was the waiter. Or maybe it was mm. Jess. It was like a three, it was Nick, Jess, and some, maybe it was Megan Fox or Jordan. Something I forget. Something we'll figure it out. If you're a bunch of like not dead yet actors, yeah. just like embedded mm-hmm. into the show. Yep. I tried to get Gina on a new girl. She said no. Really? I made that up. Oh, I'd that would have been great. I'd be it would have been great on new girl. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> first straight off from Jane the Virgin. It would have made sense. Um. Okay. So we are towards the end of this episode. Yeah. Um. Celebrating friendship. Celebrating friendship. Mm-hmm. We come to this conclusion where the gang is all. They're hanging out in the hot air balloon. Yeah. And she has to, Jess has to now put her mouth on something that Nick has put his mouth mouth on on and she um, legs it. And she can't do it. She just books it. She just runs away. Which I kind of understand. Yeah. She tried so hard Mm -hmm. to do the thing. She couldn't do it. Yeah. To palate cleanse. So she's still stuck. Yeah. And Cece's stuck. Mm -hmm. Everybody's stuck. With mm-hmm. the Nick and Schmidt situation. And we always end up where we begin with this group. Together. Together. Although you're off with Shivrang in the end. Yeah. Satya Baba, man. Yeah. What, what, a, what a G. I love Satya. He truly is. I think mm-hmm. he's really like old school friends with Liz. We'll have him on the, we'll have him on the podcast and yeah. hang out. He can tell his story. But they've known each other from time. Oh, very, yeah. very nice. Shout out to Satya Baba. Shout out to Satya Baba. Um, what... what what are some of your favorite lines? I have some lines in this episode that I think were very funny um, and irreverent. And and I think might have, I don't know, nowadays you might have issues writing these types of lines. Like but what? Schmidt, all delivered by Schmidt, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, the one line where he sees, first of all, when he sees Jax, he goes, did you think you were Omar Epps? <laughs> That that is here in the notes. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, that it never gets old to me. And uh, every time I think of Omar Epps or, or see Omar Epps out and about, I always think of that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I always think of that. And another line where he says to Shivrang, um, "What does he call him? Shiv- Shiv- Shivrank." Yeah, he refuses to pronounce his name correctly. And he goes, he goes, welcome to our country. Then he says, uh, we're having cow meat. Cow meat. <laughs> cow meat. It's like beef. You mean you're having beef, beef. tacos. It's like cow meat. Cow meat. It's, yeah. The disrespect it's, is intentional uh, and blatant on your culture. Oh my gosh. So funny. Yeah. But so, you know, <laughs> for some reason you still love him. He's such an asshole. It's the magic of Max. It truly is. Yeah. The way he delivers it. Because he's so highly inappropriate. Yes. And, and in, in real life, he's not. No, not at all. <laughs> this man writes children's books. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah look at that. Yeah. The flashback at the end is interesting when Schmidt and, and Nick are going back and forth. Because I can't tell if it was written or improvised. But the more I watch it, I, I watched it back a few times. I believe they were improvising. Because when Jake says... Um, and he says, uh, "I, I, sex, something about sexually. I get the girls. I, I know what the girls want, so I let, I give it to them, or something yeah. like that. That's a Jake Johnson for sure. That's a Jake Johnson thing. And watching Max respond to it, yeah, me too, was, man. Yeah, me He's too, like, man. Really? Yeah, but no, nah, not really. They, go, <laughs> they, I think I do believe because a lot of times those tags are improvised. Yeah, and a lot of times it's just like just do do something some moments that may not have made the cut they add it to the end yeah um some moments that are that are really funny um and i think i want to say they improvised that i'm pretty sure actually 
What I the thing I really liked about those flashbacks too in this Tinfinity episode in particular mm-hmm. is this whole thing of like equals, right? Yeah. Which is like they've had through their ten years, someone's been up, the other one's been down, and mm-hmm. it's all equals out. Yeah. That's how I felt about it. Yeah. It was real sweet. Mm. I know. I I just when I read that interview with Brett and Dave and Liz about how this was a trickier one and it felt a little thrown together. It's interesting to see the perspective of it. Mm-hmm. But um I really like this episode. Everybody kind of got a little uncomfortable, but you right. saw like the core of the friendship and how they're like inescapable from each other. Yeah. Which is like the heart of New Girl. It's why people like it. So much. Um, Hannah, let's go to break. Yeah. Um, and when we come back, we got, we got a, we got a special little treat for everybody out there and I'm not going to be shirtless. <laughs> so that's not the treat. Oh, not the treat. And we are back. Um, Hannah, what are we doing? The mess around, baby. We got to mess around. Come on. We got to mess around. Um, so, mm-hmm. topic is yes. wedding proposals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you go big or do you do something smaller and more personal? Big. Oh. I feel like you go big. It's like, I think people forget that this is a real big ask. Yeah. It's a big ask you're making of the other person. 100%. And it's kind of like the, the you're laying out the foundation of what they can expect mm-hmm. romance wise from you for yeah. a lifetime. But That's never happens so, that way. Where like the high bar, like this is where we're at. This is what I got for you. This is what my heart feels for you. I say go big. I s- oh, but here's the deal. But here's the catch. Yeah. Only go big if you, you know, you're getting... The, the yes. Yes. Just just know that this is like a fun formality where you can really just express yourself and, mm-hmm. and do it. Because if, if it's um if it's hanging in the balance, go small. Yeah. Here's the thing. If you go so big, yeah. you 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 set yourself up for failure. Potentially. That's what I'm saying. You have to know it's a lock. You, you, I mean, no, even if she says yes, because she's like, oh, this is how he is. Oh, this yeah. man is romantic. This man had a mariachi band in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. I'm, when we actually go to to do the thing mm-hmm. and get married and stuff, now I gotta top that. Mm-hmm. Then once we get married, I gotta I gotta top all of that. That's right. Not realistic. That's why people get divorced so that's much. Why, that's why Gucci just went. Yeah, here he's like, this is what you can expect for the next 50, 60 years. That's maybe take this ring. Yeah, I'm gonna give you everything. It can only you need. get better. Yeah, I, I'm one hundred percent. One hundred percent. You know what I mean. We forget about the fallout of some of these things, because she she go in there thinking that you you Romeo, mm. and and then you realize that he little Romeo. <laughs> no knock on little Romeo. Just saying, I mean, he, ain't, he ain't real person. Real person. He a real person. I love little Romeo. I'm love sorry. you, little Romeo. Oh no, I said that. Yeah. Low hanging fruit, man. Um, <laughs> another question. Yeah. Ever had to give a, a bridesmaid speech or witness a really bad one? Have you? I feel like you have given one. I've given many. A couple of bad ones, yeah. A couple of bad ones? Intentionally bad. Did you share things that you should not have shared? Yes. No, you did not. So let me explain. Uh, please. Uh, buddy was getting married. Buddy Chris was getting married. And um, and he asked for two of us to give a speech. Uh-huh. Uh, co-best men. Me and my buddy Alex. So we had the bright idea that we were going to blindly write each other's speeches. So I was going to write his speech. He's going to write my speech. But it wasn't until the moment of speech time that we give the speech to each other. And well, we had to like, say uh, it. Like a Japanese game show. 100%. When it's, you're asked to speak on love at these people's wedding. 100%. Okay. Yeah. Because honestly, how selfish of you, people out there getting married, how how selfish of you mm. to make me mm. put myself through the ringer with all this pressure to give a loving speech because you in love. Mm. Damn it, I'm not in love. You are. So you could have said this speech before you said yes. I'm just saying. You said that, then they would have been like, cool, noted. No. I'm going to ask that person. No, I got to prove a point. <laughs> point to prove. Okay, okay, all right. My speech, I wrote a speech for Alex that was very racist. Wow. It was, extreme, it was horrible. I'm going to take and it that Alex is white. Alex is Puerto Rican. Oh. And so Alex, as a Puerto Rican man, went up there and disrespected every culture. Right. And every person in that room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like he was making fun of 
the elderly that were there. There were a lot of elderly there. Right. And then when I got up there, and then when 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 I got up there to read the speech that Alex wrote for me, all I did was speak about how I was a, a pseudo TV star. <laughs> and, and, and every other sentence started with you may have seen me in you know <laughs> and and we didn't explain this to the crowd uh-huh we just went up there and did it how was the how was the uh the bride's face she was in tears she knows us so she was in tears and laughed Happy, laughed, laughed tears. yeah okay 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 my mom was like this oh. yeah She's like, I not raised this boy. So basically, you guys were the comedy act. Yes, you weren't giving like the loving wedding speeches. Everybody knew what they signed up for. Yes, okay, obviously, so that's yeah, fair. for sure. That's fair. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Except for except for great grandma. Great grandma. Who's she being did, fully insulted. She did not survive that. Uh, we right. had rushed her to the hospital. And, yeah, uh, one wedding, four funerals. <laughs> I know. Just flip that one around. She probably still with us. I don't okay. know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Clearly, Jax in this episode wasn't over his most recent breakup. Mm. How long after a breakup should you wait to get yourself back out there? Mm. That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. It depends. Yeah. It depends. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like Jess in the episode could have easily made out with a guy and been fine. Yeah. Right after her kiss with Nick. Mm -hmm. Because she had a, a purpose with it. Right. But in a romantic relationship... Mm -hmm. that's ended and you're seeking another romantic relationship mm -hmm. you need to make sure that there's enough clear air yeah and the thing is different for everybody 100 percent. me i like we're talking about giving time between a breakup and a new relationship me i'm already prepping for my next relationship before I break up with the old This is person. what I'm trying to say though. I think a lot of people um they they don't yeah. they're not leaving when 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 the relationship dies. Yeah. They got a cold body in the house for a long time yeah. before yeah. then they move on. So it looks like you Yeah, they already You broke up with your breakfast and now you're out with this girl at dinner. That mm -hmm. was quick and it's like, no, I've been over you for like 6 months. Yeah. I'd be cheating. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> This is not a wedding speech. I don't know why you're getting so romantic with your confessions right now. Uh, just want y'all to know out there, I ain't shit. And if you decide to go down this road with me, I be cheating. No. That's, uh, that's not true. That's true. You are not a cheater. That's not true. That's not true. I don't have it in me. I don't have it in me. It's a lot of work. It, it is. Because I got to remember names. That's right. It's a lot of work. I would say effort around it. I'm <laughs> just know? like, how much time do you have? Yeah, I can't do it. I, just trust fund babies to I'm cheat. Not, I'm not working it out like that. No. Mm -mm. My body is old. <laughs> I will cheat. I will. I will hug cheat. I'll give up. Ooh, ooh, I will hug the hell out of somebody else. Uh huh. Uh, just because I can hug. You know. You are a very good hugger. Yeah, yeah there you go. That's true. Hugger. Uh. Don't do the ER. <laughs> Sorry. I really wish. Is there a video of your wedding speech? I can find one. I mean. I kind of need to it. see now if, yeah. if you are telling a bigger story than what happened. Oh, no. It's, it's what happened. <laughs> it's I what happened. It. It's what happened. Um, yeah. So uh, there you have it, folks. Um, thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Mess Around with Hannah and Lamorne. Um, we just reviewed Tenfinity 218. And stick with us. Next mm -hmm. episode. I'm not sure what we're doing next episode. Hardening cock? Listen. <laughs> One of the best named episodes ever. Am I wrong? Hannah. No, 219. Quick hardening, hardening caulk. There you go. All right, Hannah. Why are you choking? Jeez, I'm not choking. <laughs> 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 thank you for listening please make sure you follow us on ig like and subscribe do all the things and go ahead and get yourself one of these yeah get yourself one of those you know yeah we love you bye bye that was the mess around this has been an iheart media production our executive producer is joel monique our engineer and editor is mia taylor additional production from daniel goodman wendy heisler and kyle chevron our theme song was written and composed by Ronald Jukebox Jackson. So we're going to catch you next time. Bye.